Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at some of the code that we used earlier to initialize our database. I went through it kind of quickly in the setup of the SQLite just to focus on... I wanted to hyper focus on just getting everything set up but now I'd like to go over what the database helper file class that we created earlier does. So that database helper here is it was a, a class that I added to our to our existing project it's a static class which allows me to call it without initializing it um, we'll get it and then from here I'm able to use that that class to just run the program and run my database initializer file. So here this is the program.cs file. This is the standard file that comes when you create a new project. This main function is what runs right away when we press start, when we run debugger, when the program opens. And then here we have that database initializer database file. Uh, method being run here and like I said because it's static we're able to just run it without initializing the database helper and uh, I commented this out because once we run it once we're not going to want to run it again and and overwrite our database that would be very bad if you've already put data inside your database you do not want to run it again because that will that will remove all your data so very important to keep that in mind yeah and so this runs right away when we click start or when someone if you compile your program and run it that'll run first uh, these two lines up here I'm not going to cover but this last one should look pretty familiar this is the one that runs the form that pops open on your screen so I'm initializing, I initialized my database right before the form ran. So that's what this program.cs file here is doing. But what I'd like to focus on is what's going on in this database helper file. So this system.data.sqlite file uh, line here is bringing in that, that package that we installed earlier, the manage new get package here. So that install package, this system.data.sqlite package, that is what this line of code, installing that package makes this line of code available. And all of that code is being used to talk with our database connection here, to talk with our database file. And this allows us to uh, do a whole host of things, but the main point, the main purpose is this file can now be easily modified in the same way we would modify a SQL Server data file or database and so on and so forth. So let's get into what the code is doing line by line here. So here we have a connection string. This is probably the most important file, rather the most important piece of information inside of this. This connection string will be used everywhere. When you are working with your database, you always need to tell it where your source is. So it's pretty common to have this connection string easily available when you are doing your database commands. In .NET, it's a pretty common uh, a pretty common call to to this specific piece of information. In the first portion of it we have uh, I, I just use the double ellipses to get out of the bin.debug and then I saved my database in a, in a folder called files and then I created this is the name of the file. So this is where all of my database information is being stored and then this version is just a call to which version of SQLite we're using. I haven't played with this much, so I don't know much about that, but uh, version 3 seems to work well, so that's the one I'm sticking with. Uh, what is my code doing? First, I'm checking if the file exists. Like I mentioned earlier, we don't want to override information, so it's a little bit of redundancy. 
I've already commented out the code, so this it's not going to create the tables again. That's what this initialize database function here is doing. So let's get into how it's doing that. This is creating the file. So this is using the SQLite library here to create this file at this specific file location. Same as the data source. These should match if you're creating a file and you want to read that connection here. That's how you'll do it. Then the nuts and bolts of our code is in here. What this code is doing is it's using the connection string to create these two tables that I made on the right over here. And the way I open up these tables, I'm doing edit top rows. So this allows me to actually make modifications to the database right here. Here we have these two create commands. The more common commands that you'll be using are queries. Um, queries are how you read data. So the the four the the three big commands that get used very frequently. Query is reading these reading the data from these tables. Then you also have updates, which will change a row of data or various rows of data and then inserts which will add a new row of data. Here we're just creating the tables. Uh, so inside of our create table commands we have extra redundancy to not create the table if it already exists. For the reason I mentioned earlier you don't want to override data. Here's the name. This is SQL. This is a SQL language here. So if you're interested in learning more about SQL it's a uh, it's I don't maybe it's a programming language it's very similar it has a lot of rules it's very strict um, I, I don't I want to I don't want to say it's like HTML markup I don't know the exact title it's given but I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a programming language for now and what it, it's very structured so here you have the the SQL command and then here we have uh, this is a, a boolean type if it exists and then here's the name of the table. And then here are the name of the columns. ID, title, author, genre. So that's open right here. Some information about the columns. So these are text columns, uh, not null. So they need to be populated. And then integers for the ID. And then the primary key. This is how we look up all of the information. So this is just going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 was uh, with the auto increment it's going to create one two three four five primary key is how we look up information on the database it's very quick to use an integer primary key versus looking up information by title or user and then we have the exact same structure here on the create users table uh, you have you have your SQL command so a lot of the ones we'll be doing in the future are query commands or inserts or updates. Then we have our users table here our, on our columns, our ID, name, email, user type columns here. And then this is just the string that's going to be used to run our SQL query command. So we're using C sharp.net to run these commands in our database. You could also just go straight into your database file like we saw earlier with the, the, the database program that we were using to the DB browser we were using. You could just directly open the database and perform those commands right here. So if I was just working with the database itself these are the commands that I would type in. I would type these commands in to this execute SQL. So that's what all of this text is. All of this text is if I was working just with the database I'd be typing in this command. But now I'm telling my application to do that. Yeah so the connection open is very similar to me physically opening up the database like we have the, with the browser here. So I open it, I create the two queries that I want to run, and then I 
I create this command, this command variable, which is going to run this. This is this is the the library. This is the function. This is the the information that's going to allow me to run this command inside of my database file. And so here, the command text is physically the SQL statement that's going to run here. And then this execute non-query statement here is just saying run this command. And then I override the command text. I reuse this command variable with this information now, and then I run that command. So that's how we, that's what this uh, database helper file is doing. It's also a good example of how a static file works where I can just call it. I don't need to initialize the the class. It's just it's just there. It's always there. It's always available. But yeah, this is a quick rundown of how my how I initialize my database using C sharp.net without having to use a GUI. You can just build all of this behind the scenes or without having to use some type of other other database management system. But yeah, thanks. That's all we're going to cover for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.